Welcome to Focus Israel's New Year special. A week ago today, Rabbi Meir Chai was murdered by Palestinian terrorists. Next week, we hope to tell you more about this. We at Focus Israel have produced 14 programs this fall. We have let Israeli experts speak about current issues, experts whose voices rarely are heard in Western media. Itamar Marcus at Palestinian Media Watch told us about the hate propaganda in Palestinian TV and in Palestinian school books. Uh, because Sweden funds the Palestinian Authority general budget, they're also funding the Palestinian school books, they're also funding Palestinian television, which is filled with hatred uh, and demonization. And uh, uh, so um, any country who, who, who gives a blind, uh, an open check to the Palestinian Authority is directly responsible for the hatred and essentially is directly responsible for the next war that we're going to have with the Palestinian uh, children when they grow up and be adults. Yossi Kleiner Levy at the Shalem Center pointed out an important question in the Middle East conflict that is almost completely ignored by the international community. See, and I keep coming back to that word legitimacy because it is, I believe, the key to this conflict. The Arab world accepting the legitimacy of a Jewish state in any borders. The 67 borders, let it be the 67 borders. But let it be explicitly based on recognition of legitimacy. Israel is the only country in the world that is negotiating over its legitimacy, over its right to exist. And that frankly drives Israelis mad. A lot of attention was given this fall to Richard Goldstone's report about the war in Gaza one year ago, a report that was criticized by all objective experts. The journalist Amos Asael at the Jerusalem Post highlighted the following for us. Now the question is therefore, uh, not whether or not civilians were hurt. Yes, they were, tragically. But the question is, what does Mr. Goldstone himself and all those who, who applaud him, what do they suggest that people do when attacked in such a manner? To sit uh, passively and be slaughtered or to respond? Obviously, if one is not a pacifist and if one is not prepared to go down as a victim of uh, terror to one's own death, one needs to fight back one way or another. Tell us how and we'll do it that way. It's not enough to tell us that the method to which you resorted uh, ended up killing people. We know it did. There was no other way of doing it. Uh, where was all this great energy of uh, concern for the civilian casualties during the previous seven years when the only ones targeted uh, as a civilian population were Israel's? The Swedish parliamentarians Anneli Janokson of the Christian Democrats and Lars Orke Staxing of the Moderates visited Israel this fall and was interviewed on Focus Israel. They clearly showed that there are Swedish politicians who wish to engage constructively in the Middle East. Hur når vi så att folk börjar prata med varandra igen? Jag känner att det är en viktig fråga. Gil Troy, history professor at McGill University, explained his understanding of the negotiations over Iran's nuclear energy program. Well, I'm a cautious optimist, despite my concerns, I would say. I'm optimistic because I have watched the Iranians over the last 20 years, and since the Iran-Iraq war, the Iranians have been very cautious and have not risked their own people. They've been very effective international players by using proxy warfare through Hezbollah and through Hamas. So I don't worry necessarily about them destroying, waking up one morning and destroying the world. What I do worry about and this is where the caution comes in, is that they are committed and they thrive on the chaos. They are committed and thrive on the terrorism. And as long as they continue on this path of terrorism and delegitimization, it'll be very hard to find some kind of accommodation. The deputy managing director of the Jerusalem Post, Caroline Glick, explained how the U.S. actually aggravated the negotiation position between Israel and the Palestinians when they started demanding a settlement freeze. And now the Americans have left Abbas in a lurch because if he goes back on the position that the Americans actually put him into, then he looks like he's a traitor to the Palestinian cause. And so what the Americans have basically done is set back any possibility of negotiations between Israel and the Palestinians probably for years because on the one hand, um, they've lost all credibility with the Israelis, which is very difficult for a U.S. administration to do. And on the other hand, they've just lost all credibility with the Arabs. So nobody believes anything that the Obama administration says anymore. And everybody's been placed into these positions that they, particularly on the Arab side, that they're incapable of changing. 
Another prominent journalist at the Jerusalem Post, Khaled Abu Tameh, expressed what many Arabs think but don't dare to say. If I were given the choice between living in a Palestinian state or inside Israel, I'd rather live inside Israel. If you ask me on a personal basis, what do I prefer? I prefer to live in a country of law and order and where there's democracy, and that's Israel. When the Swedish TV news show Aktuelt claimed that IDF rabbis encourage Israeli soldiers to kill without distinction, without managing to interview a single rabbi, we let the IDF rabbi Shlomo Vilk explain what the situation really is like. We try to make them see faces when they go to battle. We try to make them see people when they fight them and not just enemies. And then I think maybe one day this is what will, bring, what will make them moral soldiers. And even if they fight, and even if, God forbid, they have to kill, they still see faces and understand what they're doing. The French media analyst Philippe Carsanti explained what is at stake in the news reporting, and that the lies that are spread about Israel fan the flames of extremism, which leads to people being killed. A lot of people don't know the effect of the Aldera case. What happened with, with this news reporter? What was the effect on world opinion? Well, on the world opinion, it happened, it was a year before 9-11. It was just the starting point on the Intifada, and Bin Laden used it to incite before 9-11. It has been used also to justify the beheading of Daniel Pearl, the Wall Street journal, uh, journalist. But it's also been used by uh, most of the Muslim countries in postage stamps, street names, building monuments, posters, everywhere. And it's... Uh, picture which incited against Israel, the Jews and the Western world since nine years and it's becoming now in the Muslim world the most popular figure of the Muslim sufferings uh, committed by Israel and with his complicit uh, the Western world. We also showed you that far from everything in Israel is war and misery. Prachwi Sprung at the President Tense Institute told us about young Israeli entrepreneurs. And the singer Shigat Isak told us about her debut album and the years of her childhood she spent in Sweden. You got glimpses of Jewish holidays and celebrations, both the more known ones like Hanukkah and the less known ones like Pidyon Ben. We also showed you that IDF soldiers are people and not monsters, like the IDF reservist Joel. Jag är religiös, jag tror på att vi ska vara här i Israel ehm, och det är inte självklart att vi är här. Det är ingen självklarhet och ingen sa att eh, livet skulle vara lätt och eh, eh, lämna allting åt sidan utan det här är en del av livet och det, det, driver, det är det som driver mig. Det, det finns inget annat val, någon måste göra det. When I was interviewed on Israeli TV, I also got a chance to tell a little bit about Focus Israel. You operate a, a news slash teaching website in English and Swedish. It's called Focus Israel. How did that come about? Well, it started as a vision of an independent TV producer in Sweden, Hans Lindblad, who wanted to change what I was just talking about, the, the poisoned climate in Sweden. Um, he wanted to do in-depth, uh, honest reporting from Israel to change this. All right, um, they can uh, follow your work on uh, your website, www.focusisrael.org. Paul Wyden, uh, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. We want to encourage our viewers to support our work to convey in-depth, honest reporting from Israel. Log on to our website, www.focus-israel.org, and click on Support Us. My name is Paul Whedon, and that's all from Focus Israel's New Year special. Happy New Year. See us again next week.